and thanks for joining us on The Pet Stop. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Voynick from the American Animal Hospital in Randolph. Well, ahead on this week's show, we'll learn about the importance of early training and socialization for puppies. We'll also have this week's Pet of the Week, as well as a visit from the folks at Liberty Humane in Jersey City for this week's adoption segment. But first up this week, the holiday season is almost upon us, but while it can be joyous for most of us around Thanksgiving, it's full of hazards as well for your pets. And here to tell us how to keep your pets safe during the holidays is Dr. Debbie Breitstein, registered uh, veterinarian and co-founder of the Animal Health Care of Marlboro. Welcome back, Dr. Deb. Great to be back. Always Thank good you very to give much, us Dr. tips. Oh, thanks for being here. So uh, Thanksgiving's upon us, and uh, that's when we see a lot of sick dogs after Thanksgiving, and sometimes sick cats. Historically, Black Friday, dietary indiscreet <laughs> day for our dogs and cats. Yeah. The holidays do pose some hazards for our kids. The different foods, different schedules, a lot of things going on, a lot of stress, a lot of changes. So you're All right, right, Thanksgiving. So let's prevent them. All right. Where do you want to start? <laughs> well, you, you brought some full screen images, and so we'll, we'll talk about some of these uh, issues. And one thing we shouldn't do is to share table scraps, especially the fatty, greasy stuff. Leftovers should be leftover, and garbage should be garbage. Make sure your animals don't get into the garbage can. Sometimes you think that they're the dishes in the sink aren't a problem. I've seen cats get up and lick the grease off of that, pancreatitis, dietary, yeah. indiscretion, diarrhea, vomiting. And that gets us into the turkey scraps, actually. They, the lean turkey actually is okay, but turkey scraps, the greasy stuff, uh, will inflame the pancreas. Pancreatitis, anything with itis is inflammation of the pancreas in this case. It can be fatal, as we've seen in some uh, unfortunate cases. And turkey bones, of course, may splinter and cause some issues. Uh, and again, the string, sure. so important. Well, you know, if it's, it should be, if you're going to offer or share your food with your furry kids, it should be as good, if not better, than what you put in your own mouth. Okay. The most common form of foreign bodies found in dogs are bones. Yeah. They lodge in three pretty common areas, but that's the number one foreign body that's recovered. And not only the string, but the aluminum foil, the uh, cleansing. I've had a dog that ate, actually it was a cat, I'm sorry, ate a Brillo pad mm -hmm. after cleaning the roasting pan. Smart thing to eat, huh? Yeah, Tasty. Go figure. And salmonella, of course, is an issue because if the if the turkey's out too long and it hasn't been cooked properly, uh, that bacteria can really wreak havoc. Food poisoning, there's the acute, and then there is a more chronic food poisoning, and it really does have some of the same signs as many other problems, vomiting, diarrhea, depression, uh, high body temperature, which you can't just tell by feeling them. It really should be a rectal thermometer yep. taking. Yeah, forget the wet eat. nose, dry nose thing. No, nope. wet nose, cold work. nose, warm, dry. <laughs> Could rectal be temperature, the old rectal thermometer, 102 is what you want. Absolutely, That's it's higher normal. than ours and should be. Mm. So if any of these signs are something you're noticing, a uh, trip to your veterinarian, a call to the emergency service, even poison control can be helpful for Good us. Point. So yes, the other things see. are environmental hazards. You know, there's decorations, there's burning candles. For Halloween, we've gone through costumes, but Thanksgiving we have candles, we have potpourri, incense, and there's also people that come in and out of the household. Sure. The doors sure. are opening, lots of guests. They don't know your routine, they don't know your animals. You could have a Houdini cat that just goes out and there you are. You don't want an open door policy for your pets. Not at all, <laughs> not That's, at all. And if you do, God forbid, they should have an ID tag or a microchip Microchip or both. ID, both. This way yeah. we can identify those that lost, lose their way home and yeah. get them back to their... You know, a lot place. of people are still unaware of the fact that raisins and grapes uh, are very toxic and as few as seven grapes or raisins can kill a large breed dog. That and also sugar-free gum. Yep. Uh, we have chocolate still as a problem. We have ornamental plants that are popular around the holiday time. So all of these dietary things that we think are no big deal for our, ourselves are a big problem for our animals. You know, the xylitol that's in sugar-free gum, in which case even a 10-pound dog can die of two, slut, two pieces of gum uh, because it drops blood sugar and causes liver failure eventually. A lot of people are unaware of that. And also xylitols and vitamins as well. Vitamins. And vitamins and also in liquid suspensions of medication. That's One right. of the pain medications that we use, Neurontin, is actually in a xylitol base. So and the question throat lozenges too. So people have to be really careful about this Backpacks, pocketbooks, uh, pockets of coats, all of those are access points. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we've seen it. Cats not so much with the sugar-free issues, but I wouldn't take a chance with Cats that. Cats usually aren't into the sweets as much as dogs. But, no, uh, they, they are a little bit more yeah. discretionary. You and I not have operated on cats that have eaten sewing needles. So sewing <laughs> needles I had, you know, eating their own uh, toys, parts of toys, yeah. feathers, plants, yeah. all of that can be a problem yeah. for them. So the holidays should be a happy time, but there are winter warnings, there are holiday hazards, all sorts of advisories that your veterinarian is the best person to talk to if you have a concern. And many of us have websites that can access information and important links 
for uh, poison control networks, mm -hmm. just to get that information out there. And if your dog is the type that just uh, can't help itself but to get into <laughs> mischief and stuff like that and escape out the door, and you're going to have a lot of people board them at a local boarding facility or veterinary hospital. We do medical know? boarding all the time yeah. for special needs kids. Even yeah. if it's a day stay, even daycare, it's just safer that way. Or use a cage or a crate if they're used to that in their home. Restrict their access to a certain area that's safe for them so that they don't have the run of the house when people are in and out. Open windows, people open the windows with cooking odors, cats get out that way. So there's exactly. a lot of... We're getting colder temperatures now too, and we have to remember about the susceptibility of puppies, kittens, and the geriatric uh, patients of ours. Absolutely. It gets, when the weather gets colder, I tell people a lot of times if it's too uh, cold for you to be out dressed properly, then it's too cold for your animals to be out as well. Right. Cats will gravitate to the hood of a car because of the warmth. Mm -hmm. uh, animals sometimes get haircuts during the winter time. That means that an important protective layer is no longer there. So coats and sweaters, not just for the um, you know, fashion statement, but for the functional statement. They do need that. You know, you and I have seen horrible cases of this, and we should mention it. And you, you briefly mentioned banging on the, the hood of your car. They, they're, they're called fan belt cats, uh, fan belt cats. They, they unfortunately are in the hood. They're under your hood because of the warmth when it starts getting chilly out. And boy, once that engine starts, if a cat gets caught in that fan belt, you just don't want to see it. It's a disaster. It, it, it is a disaster. Yeah, Most absolutely. of us have key fobs. That is enough to sometimes get a cat startled. Mm -hmm. But just always, you know, take precautions. It might just not, might, might not be a cat either. Dogs will gravitate to warmth, other animals as well. I mean, I don't think it's just limited to cats. Right. And uh, of course, then as it gets colder, you worry about temperature changes, ice that forms that can be irritating to the pads mm -hmm. and the feet, mm -hmm. ice melter that's used. So there's a whole host of environmental issues. and. Nothing for nothing, fleas and ticks still remain a big problem. I People know. think that the weather gets cold, no more fleas, no more, no more ticks. Yeah. Not the case. In Morris County, they're all over the, you know, th even these days, it's a little bit chilly. It's better to be protective and preventive. Yeah. Year-round flea tick control, heartworm prevention. We can have a 70-degree yeah. de day in January, and then mosquitoes are out. We have, yeah. So we just yeah. say, be safe, be protective, be proactive. Make sure your kids are safe. Yeah. Heartworm prevention also includes, as many people know, intestinal parasite prevention. So that's which is important. a problem for the people on the cleanup committee on the other end of the leash because we can get contaminated and infected Absolutely. with these parasites. So Especially can children, children. Yeah. and those that are immunocompromised. So it's a really important fact to clean up, make your environment safe for you, for your kids, and enjoy the holidays. Always good to have you on, Dr. Deb. Thanks have for a having happy us. Thanksgiving. Thanks. So to come, folks, why it's so important to start training and socializing your puppy early. We'll also have our adoptions and pet of the week as well. Stick around, there's a lot more to come on the Pet Stop, only on News 12 New Jersey. Welcome back to the Pet Stop. I'm Dr. Brian Voynick. All new puppy owners want their new addition to grow into a well-behaved and well-adjusted adult dog. And that's why early socialization and training is so crucial. And here to discuss its importance are trainers John and Aaron McWilliams of Positive Experience Pet Services in Rockaway, Morris County, New Jersey. They're here with their greater Swiss mountain dogs, Red Bull and Alita. It's good to see you, John. Hey, Doc. It's always a pleasure. You too, Aaron. Good to well, see you. greater Swiss. You guys are all about greater Swiss, <laughs> aren't you? Yes, we, we are. are almost 2,000 years old, aren't they, this breed, from the Russian Mastiff originally or so? Originally. Way back. Now, what got you into this breed? 
Erin did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did. I met one years ago, uh -huh. and I was at a behavior conference, met one, fell in love. Now, would Absolutely. you agree, uh, John, that this is a giant breed that just loves kids and gets along great with kids and other dogs? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. These, these and Erin, nice does animals. it take them not only two to three years to develop physically, but mentally as well? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, as you can see, Red, Red is going to be four next week. And this guy's at Westminster <laughs> yes, this coming be, year. So we'll have to have you back on the show closer to Valentine's Day. Yeah. The big, yes, yeah, you big baby. <laughs> 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 so, um, but you, you train all kinds of dogs and, and have a great reputation of doing that as well. That's what we yes. hear. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. congratulations for that. But uh, tell us the ins and outs of uh, puppy training. So important. You know, it used to be not all that long ago, 20 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, that people said, I oh, don't start training your puppy until it's like four or six months old. I was like, no, oh. that's what's yeah, wrong. No. When do you start? As soon as you touch them. There you go. The very first day okay. you pick them up. Doesn't matter how old they are. Mm -hmm. This guy here started his training at five weeks old. He was wow. he was extremely nervous as, as a five week old puppy. Right? Mm -hmm. We just wound up handling him every single day. We had parties in our house. Yeah, I tell people, people treat him like a football. Carry him yep, all yeah. around. You yep. know? Yeah, especially during the socialization period of the first eleven weeks, you know, the earlier the better. Yeah. Especially as soon as you bring him home at eight weeks, maybe ten weeks, yep. get him out there, just 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 start taking him everywhere. Have people come over, throw some parties. You brought some tips and we'll go over them, uh, John and Aaron. Let's let's start with uh, number one here. The more early and diverse the socialization, all the better. Exactly. Just like you're saying. Exactly. You take them everywhere. You show them everything. You turn the music up as, mm -hmm. as loud as you want. Mm -hmm. You go over and cook the way you want. Yeah. You shouldn't go over and um, walk on eggshells around a puppy. Proof of that is the adopted uh, greyhound. You know, they're such wonderful dogs. But they've never heard a telephone before. They've right. never heard a doorbell. Vacuum. You know, so yeah. all of these stimuli will be helpful. Let's go to number two. Puppies need to be taught how to behave in social settings. Absolutely, that's so important. Just like kids, you know. Oh, true, true. A lot of people tend to harp on obedience with, with their dogs. Mm -hmm. If you just get them out there and just and just calmly just show them the ropes and uh, just get them to behave, it's always better than having a dog that you always have to tell them to do something. Yeah. Easier said than done, but we have more tips. Let's go to number three. <laughs> Behavior trumps obedience. Exactly, exactly. The difference between the two of them is that in obedience, the owner has to control the scene. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, the owner's going to be busy doing whatever, even enjoying the moment. Whereas behavior, if you can teach the dog to go over and control his own moment and his own scene, it's, it's just so much better. You can take him anywhere and not really worry about what's going on. All right, let's go to number four. Every behaved puppy will obey. Not every obedient puppy knows how to behave. That's exactly what I was saying just, just a couple seconds ago, is that if you over obedience a dog, as soon as you don't tell them what to do, like sit, stay, like settle, or something like that, they don't know what to do. And that's where a lot of people wind up um, getting a little beaten up with their dogs, that they spend so much work getting this dog to listen to them, that as soon as they don't say a word, the dog doesn't know what to do. Mm, okay, it could be confusing for a little dog. Oh, true. Yeah. All right, next, uh, next point we have, a tired puppy is a great puppy, makes everything easier to handle and to teach, you know, and, and that's true with children as well. You know, that's <laughs> like exercise is a great, uh, uh, a great little pill to calm them down. It really is, it really uh, is. If you look at this five month old puppy right now, uh -huh. she's, she's been in daycare all morning. <laughs> and now She's beaten. <laughs> she really is. <laughs> you can take her Fly anywhere. <laughs> and this is teaching her that in, in, in in this power-packed environment right now, mm -hmm. this is what she should be doing. Excellent. She's doing it naturally. And now, if she didn't exercise this morning, she'd be a nutcase right She now. really would be. She'd be all over the place. A and no fault yeah. of hers. No, no, no <laughs> I'm fine with the old puppy. But thank you, John and Aaron, for exercising this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. Okay, it's our pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> okay, satisfy the puppy's needs to chase and chew. There you go. When they read the puppy book, they know all about that. Turn those needs into wants. A want is easier to handle than a need. Absolutely, absolutely. Dogs have basic needs, water, food, oxygen. Mm -hmm. They also need to be touched. If you don't touch your puppy, you, they're not gonna grow into be you know, healthy and sound dogs. Right. They also have a need to chase and chew, mm -hmm. being predatory animals. You have to satisfy those needs fully. You have to get them out there romping, chewing bones, chewing toys, mm -hmm. chasing things. As soon as you can take that need and turn it into a want, everything becomes easier to handle. If you only want a glass of water, I can go over and, and maybe spill something in it and you don't want it anymore. If you need a glass of water, you don't really care what I did to it. You're mm -hmm. going to drink it. Right, Same right. thing here with the dog. If the dog needs to chase and chew you, he really doesn't care what you're going to do mm -hmm. to him. If he only wants to, it becomes just so much easier to handle, just so Good. much easier to manipulate. Good. Okay, let's go to our next tip here. A nice mix of play and work makes a great and sound puppy. Absolutely. All work and no play. You know, it's a terrible thing. Nice mix. Go over and enjoy the dog. Play with him. Romp him. Spoil him, really. Right. Spoil him, but set parameters and train him. Train him for a couple minutes. Play with him for a whole bunch of minutes. Play with him. 
train them, play with them, train them. And that's where you get this nice bond between dog and owner, and you get a very sound and stable dog. That'll Excellent. take both at the Excellent. same time. All right. Yep. And you have events at, uh, at uh, your place, too. You had, what event did you have recently? Uh, s something to do with a competition uh, after your training classes? Uh, uh, and you have Santa photos with Santa. Yeah, the, the carnival. Yeah, the I hold a pig carnival. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Okay. We have events all the time, actually, yeah. and, and it depends on what's going on, like with agility classes and drop-in agility. We have little events there, you uh -huh. know, for those continuing training um, students, and we're having we're doing holiday photos with Santa. All right, and for those that can't make it to your to your sessions, you've got this DVD which you can get on, on your website, and we'll link it to yours. So that's that's uh, that's good, got some great tips Thank as you. well. Thank John, you. keep up the great right. work, Aaron. Thank you very and much. And thanks for bringing these beautiful uh, Greater Swiss Mountain Dogs on. They Thank are you. outstanding. Good luck in Westminster. Uh, thank you. Yeah, you never well, know. Well, we don't have a we'll winner yet. They won't yeah. recognize since 95, so let's hope we yeah. get up, up on Wouldn't the board. Wouldn't that be nice? Folks, now it's time for a pet of the week. And this week's photos come to us from Laura in Ringwood. And this is her five year old cat named Harry. And Harry was adopted from the Bloomingdale Animal Shelter. And since the day he arrived, he's been king of the house. The family dog Cosmo even obeys Harry more than he does Laura. Harry's so mellow, he allows Laura's granddaughter to pull on his ears and tail and doesn't even seem to care. Harry greets every person that comes into the house by lying on the floor with his tummy up waiting to be appreciated. Great shots. If you'd like your pet to be pet of the week, send us your pictures. You can mail them to the address that you see right there on the screen or email them to thepetstop at news12.com. But make sure that you tell us why your pet should be pet of the week. We'll be right back after this week's adopting. Stay with us. What a handsome. Well, welcome back to the Pet Stop on News 12 in New Jersey. I'm Dr. Brian Voynich. I'm joined now by Janet Russell and Debbie Viney of the Liberty Humane Society, and they're here with Autumn and China. It's good to have you on. It's great to be Thank back. You. Oh, Thank who's you. who here? Well, this is Autumn. This is Autumn. And obviously, Cute puppy. she's a three, probably about a three to four month old adorable puppy, oh, Pitbull. And she was rescued out of a, a domestic violence yeah, situation. Yeah, she had so kind of a, she, she had a rough start, yes. And but she's so social now. She's you did a, very ob sweet. Obviously, a wonderful job with she's her. She's gained a lot of weight in the last 10 days since she's been with us. Good. And at first, she was afraid to come out of her oh. crate and she was very very well fearful. we were just talking about the with the mcwilliams about social early yes, socialization that's yeah. so crucial so well, i'm glad you got her in time and how about big beautiful china over here this is china she's about between three and five we think and okay possibly a short pay pitbull mix mm -hmm. beautiful like the, the markings only her hairdresser could uh, tell <laughs> yeah, us how she that's also <laughs> came from a rough start she was tied outside to a fence wow. so she was oh. brought in by animal control so all right well we need adoptees yes we need uh foster homes we yes. definitely we could use monetary help yes and we could absolutely. use bleach and paper newspapers towels, and paper towels and help help these shelters out folks your local shelters thank keep you keep up so the much. great work thank, thank you. you thank you thank you poof puppy there for any more information on anything about today's show or from past shows as well, just log on to our website, and that's news12.com, and click on the features section. You'll find all of the information that you need right there. And that's all the time we have for this week's show. I'm Dr. Brian Koenig. Thanks a lot for watching, and always remember, a healthy pet's a happy pet. And we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.